day today. The big day. This is gonna go on that. Using this, which is a materials handler. So I've got a friend of mine coming over. So I'm gonna get everything ready. Move this out of the way. Get this clear. Get the angle grinder ready to clean up. The edges ready for welding. And uh, hopefully everything's gonna go well. So Ron's here tying the um, top of the actual bow because we're going to lift it up from horizontal with the engine crane and that way we can get it upright so we can eventually get it onto the materials handler. So I made an extra long boom for my uh, engine crane as you can see that sort of galvanized bit that extends from the black bit and then we're pushing the whole lot towards the material handler and then um, we'll end up wheeling the material handler underneath the actual bow once we've got it positioned in a, in a way that it's vertical and not about to fall down on anybody, which is what we're doing right now. So there's the material handler being put in place, the engine crane being removed, and now we're raising, we're trying to work out how to stabilize it at first by the looks, and then we're going to raise the forks up to actually support the bow um, with the materials handler. You can see we're tilting it onto one side because there's these extra legs that you sort of open up to give it even more stability. And then you can see the forks going up there. It's actually a really good machine. It's um, It needs to be on level ground to make it um, safer, but it's uh, rated 300 kilos and it can easily lift this bow. It just made it so much easier. It was definitely worth hiring. It would, it would have been a lot more wobbly with the engine crane and the engine crane um, or engine lifter would have had a limit to how high. I think it was on the limit where you can see it now at that angle. Um, but that materials handler or sometimes called a duct lifter, I'm assuming they lift ducts for air conditioning or something, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, very worthwhile tool if you're doing this on your own um, and relatively easy to use. What's happening now is we're re-offering the frame to the bed, if you like, and getting those tines on the forklift part, those yellow ones, clamped to the actual bow itself or the frame uh, to make it more rigid and to basically stop it from um, leaning one way or the other and trying to get it as horizontal as possible, and then clamping it to the bed. Um, what are we looking at, Ron? Uh, Look how good these measurements are. It's almost flush with that. Yeah. So the composite panel will sit in there, Ron. Yeah. yeah. So literally, this is just over 30 mil, so I've got yeah. plenty of room for gluing. Yeah. And then that'll be a cover plate going on top of this. And those panels I showed you in there, they'll go up to here somewhere. Yeah. And hold the panel that sits there. Oh, okay. So just showing how it's being held up at the moment. And see those plates up there? Yeah. So the composite panel will sit on top of that SHS, just behind that little triangulated piece. Yeah, yeah. And that will tie in all the way to the front one. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Hopefully the tray can take it as well. All right, so I'm going to put this back on time lapse in a minute. Here we go. Time to mark out the grinding spots. Yeah, those two. That one and that one. You can see how they're starting to bend. That one's not so bad, but this one's bending in the middle. And they're the trestle tables to get it up that high. Yeah. So, it's all set up. We've done everything we can to get it square as possible, 90 degrees to the bed, perfectly from side to side. It's within a couple of mil each side. The tray is not particularly straight, so I'm trying to base it on an average of all the two. You can see there's a little bit of a rise there, and it levels off on the edges. It's all clumped up. 
ready to be welded. So that's what I'm about to do now. And um, yeah, hopefully she'll stay exactly where she's supposed to be. It's really well clamped. I might even tack well these on somewhere. basically tacking um, the frame to the bed here um, just to get it firm and detached and at some point I will um, weld it properly do stitch welding all the way around um, and as you can see I've had to put this towel down on the floor because the floor is so hot I can't even stand on it or lie on it it was absolutely boiling um, I had to transfer it from one side to the other put it under my knee so I could kneel down and uh, feel without burning my kneecap. I'm constantly checking it for being square um, and at this point I'm just grinding back the little tack wells so I can do a continuous bead from the tack wells uh, and this is what you see me doing right now is just um, running a bead of about an inch and a quarter maybe an inch and a half um, and I do this all the way around underneath and on top and you can see me doing it underneath there obviously the material handler is in the way so there's a couple of wells I could not get to underneath um, and later on I'm, I move the actual materials handle as you can see there the wind is uh, picking up and I've had to put my temporary windbreak which is basically a window screen with a towel over it just to minimize um, the argon being blown away while I was welding because um, I prefer welding with um, gas it's just a much cleaner weld you don't have to do much prep to it to put a finish on it and um, yeah it was handy having that uh, little screen and towel that's cool Everything's pretty much welded up. I think I've got a couple underneath to do. I'm going to move the trolley and the support system. And hopefully, that's that. This one I'll still do. I think it'll be fine. Um, yeah. So, let's And on the inside as well. So I'm just going to get a drink because it's absolutely freaking boiling. And hopefully.
bow or the frame just to give it a little shake test. You'll see I'm giving it a little shake there. And actually what's happening, the whole bed is vibrating with it. So it's very solid onto the bed. There's no doubts about it. Let's, but just double checking and um, yeah, it isn't going anywhere. And with the way the panels are gonna glue on there, that thing isn't gonna move. So I decided to be a little bit braver and then um, basically um, just put my whole body weight on there, which is probably about 80 kilos, and do a good old hang test. And as you can see, no issue. That movement is the whole tray bouncing up and down, not just the actual frame itself. So I think the job absolutely well done. Okay, that's success. Happy with that, solid enough. Time for a break. So, need to finish off the other one. But, good day's work today. Good day's work.